Hey everyone, this is Matt, and today's video I have for you my Umi Control deck profile for Diamond 1. So I use this deck profile to get to Diamond 1. Uh, yeah, Umi Control is actually quite viable in the current uh, format. You know, Sprite took over, obviously Sprite's everywhere, but Umi Control is actually not bad. Um, and I think if you enjoy fishes, if you like uh, the concept of Umi Control, I think you would enjoy and definitely be able to take this, uh, a, this deck to Diamond 1. So, yeah, I would say after... Uh, my last two adventures of videos uh, for Umi Control um, definitely felt like this deck was weaker than Labyrinth. Um, so you know, if, if your if your goal is just to win as often as possible and like uh, you know whatever, Labyrinth is definitely the better investment, especially if you don't want to spend gems on Umi Control. Um, to be fair, Umi Control is actually not as expensive as as a lot of people think. And um, yeah, one thing that's like hilarious is that uh, you know because less players are from familiar with the deck there's a lot of people who just like make mistakes right but if I mean if they know what your choke points are then like they can really screw you anyway so just like my other uh, you know deck profiles I'm going to build this deck from scratch uh, guiding you through my thought process and unlike previous control decks I've done like uh, uh, Guru, Subterra, you know um, uh, Labyrinth, Eldritch right this is this deck is I don't want to say more combo-y because it doesn't really combo it's like it, it's it's combo in the, in the sense that you need combinations of cards in order for you to make your board. It's not like any hand of five six cards is going to be good, like in like Eldritch, Labyrinth, Subterra, etc. Like you need some you need to see some specific cards. But if you see those cards, then you just you know out you can outgrind your opponent, you can prevent, prevent them from doing so much, and uh, yeah, you'll probably win. So, um, all right, so let's get into the core of the deck here. So cards I consider to be core. So let's start with the main boss monster himself. Three copies of Ocean Dragon Lord Kyrushin. So this card is your boss monster. It's a level 5 water sea serpent. 2000 title truth says, while Umi is on the field, each player can only control one face of non-water monster. If a player controls two or more, they must send some to the graveyard so they only control one. During your main phase, you can add from your deck to your hand one Umi, one Kyrushin spell trap, or one sea stealth spell trap. You can only use this effect of Kyrushin once per turn. So, uh, yeah, this is like a floodgate. It's like, I mean, some people say it's like goes and match on legs, but it's actually better than goes and match because it's like, it's more like goes and match. If goes and match and TCB had a baby, right? Uh, that, that's, this is what the baby would look like. Like, if this, this, this dude is nuts. And b so this effect is continuous, which means it cannot be negated by like Burn the Fleur. Like, if this hits the field, the effect is go goes off immediately. Your opponent cannot respond, right? The only way to stop, if, if you normal uh, summon this to the field, right, or tribute summon, whatever, the only way they can stop you is Solemn Judgment. Like, they Solemn Judgment the summon. That's it. There, there's no other way to stop it. Obviously, you can imperm it by the time, but, but if they imperm you, it'll be too late. You, like, the board is already cleared, right? So, yeah, this card is crazy good. Um, and in fact, so it, it requires Umi for the, the Floodgate effect to be active, but it does not require Umi to do a search. So literally, if this hits the field, you can search for your Umi. So, and there you go. You have Umi. So yeah, this card is great. Um, <laughs> your goal is to turbo this card out onto the field with Umi as quickly and as often as possible. So yeah, we are running three here because we want to see it in our hand because sometimes you just want to normal summon this, bo this bad boy. Um, oh, he's a level five. How do you normal summon? So uh, we do play Legendary Ocean, which reduces lav uh, the... Um, you know, uh, levels of, of water monsters on the field in hand by one. So this becomes a level four if you have Legendary Ocean. Uh, but you can also just Tribute Summon, right? Like, you just need one Tribute. And uh, after you see what this deck can do, like, that's actually not unreasonable. So, yeah, three copies of Kyrushin. This card is cracked. Super good. We are playing three copies of Electric Jellyfish. Uh, this is our primary normal summon. Um, it's, so let's read what so First of all, it's level four. Aqua, 1400 attack, 1700 defense. By the way, the fact that it's 1400 attack means that it can attack through Messenger of Peace. A lot of Sprite play, uh, sorry, Runic players have been playing Messenger of Peace, right? Uh, which stops 1500 attack or higher from attacking. Jellyfish is not restricted by that. And let's read this effect. You can send one Umi from your deck hand or face up field of graveyard and special summon a water monster from your hand. When your opponent activates a monster effect or spell or a spell card or effect while Umi is on the field, quick effect, negate that effect, and if you do, make this card gain 600 attack defense. So... If you open with this in your hand and Kyrushin, you normal Electric Jellyfish, you activate Jellyfish, pay cost, send Legendary Ocean from your deck to your graveyard, and then you special Kyrushin. Kyrushin will search 
a card, and um, typically you'll search Sea Stealth Attack, which will put Umi on your field on your opponent's draw phase. And then both Kyrushin's uh, Floodgate effect will be live, and this card's um, um, uh, Monster and Spell Negate will be live. So know that this this it negates the effect. It does not destroy. It does not negate the activation. It does not destroy. So if your opponent plays Branded Fusion, you negate the effect. They can't play any more Branded Fusion. It's like Ash, right? Um, if your opponent plays uh, the Runic Field Spell, right? Um, do not chain to the activation of, of the field spell, chain it to when they attempt to target a draw two or three or whatever, right? Then you chain to that because it doesn't leave the field. Uh, on like, like It doesn't really stop like um, continuous uh, spell traps, So or sorry, spells. So keep that in mind. So yeah, uh, because this is a level four and this has the ability to special summon any water monster from your hand, theoretically, uh, you can use this and any of the level four water monsters that you're, about, you're gonna see in this deck to make a rank four. And in fact, and do a rank four play. In fact, if you have legendary ocean on the field, this becomes level three. And all the level four, the same, the same level four water monsters that I, I was just uh, referencing, in your hand will become level three. So you can make a rank three play instead of a rank four play. So keep that in mind. That uh, if you can't get Kyrushin, you you have plenty of options via XC summoning. All right, cool. So we're gonna play one copy of Doom Kraken. This card is really good. Uh, yeah, just one copy because it's you know there's many ways to search it. Uh, 1400 attack, again, can attack through Messenger Peace, level 4. There's an Aqua, just like Jellyfish. If Umi is on the field, quick effect, you can target one water monster you're, you control, except Doom Kraken, and one wa monster your opponent controls. Special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, return that monster you control to hand, and if you do that, destroy your opponent's monster. So, this essentially is a hand trap for this deck. So, if you have any water monster, assuming you have Umi, you can literally like pop in a post monster and bounce your monster back to the hand. So this is really good for dodging like imperm type effects and also really good for just spot removal. Like you need to get rid of an opponent's annoying uh, uh, monster. You can you, you can use a Kraken in hand, right? Uh, second effect: when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can return this card to the hand, and if you do, negate the attack. So a lot uh, so a lot of times the you know uh, your opponents might try to go to a battle phase to swing over Jellyfish or swing over Kyrushin. And uh, if this is on the field, if this is in your hand, you can literally pop one of their monsters. But if it's all, all in the field, it can negate the attack. So, yeah, this is really good. This is a really good card, and it's a level four, uh, so it'll always be the same level as Jellyfish. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's 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 a uh, you're gonna be able to make Xyz summons with Jellyfish if you so choose. Okay. Next, we want one copy of Mega Fortress Whale. Where is he? Uh, right here. So Mega Fortress Whale is also really good. Um, it's a level seven, 2550 attack fish. So it becomes level six under uh, um, a Legendary Ocean. So you can, you know, tribute summon it for one, I suppose. But most of the time it'll be special summoning this. In fact, you can even special summon this off Jellyfish. Why not if it's in your hand? So it says, if Umi's on the field, you can activate this effect. Your water monsters can attack directly this turn. So yeah, <laughs> this deck is really good at OTK if you got this bad boy out. Uh, and in fact, you can literally ignore your opponent's monsters. Like, like you know how Runic sometimes like to block their their uh, their board from being attacked by just using their quick plays to sp so special summon their fusions. You can, you can literally attack around them and ignore them, right? Like this is hilarious. Um, and sometimes, like if your opponent has is sitting on a monster and they can't summon any other monsters because um, they're floodgated, uh, they want you to attack and kill their monster. But if you literally just ignore, don't attack their monster and just attack around their monsters, uh, yeah, that that hurts them even more. So. Second effect. During your opponent's battle phase, quick effect, you can target one face of monster your opponent controls, destroy it. Okay, so note that this second effect does not require Umi on the field. The first effect does, the second effect does not. Third effect also does not require Umi. It says, uh, if this card on the field is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can either add to your hand or special summon one water warrior monster from your deck or graveyard. So, note, water warrior monster, very important because that's going to come up later. So yeah, uh, this is a good one of. Um, so we're also going to be playing two copies of Warrior of Atlantis. So Warrior of Atlantis uh, isn't really like, I mean, it's not archetypal. Like this came out like years ago, but it simply says discard this card to the graveyard, add one legendary ocean from your deck to your hand. So this is literally two more copies of Legendary Ocean, right? So we essentially run five copies thanks to this card. Cool. Uh, we're also going to be playing one copy of Maiden of the Aqua. So Maiden of the Aqua is a level four monster, uh, Aqua Water. 
2000 Defense says, as long as this card is face up on the field, the field is treated as Umi. However, you know, there's no attack increase, or, right? And if there is an active field spell on the field, this effect is not applied. So this monster is Umi on the field, folks. And this is very important because it's going to come up later. Sometimes if you don't have Umi, you can get this, this girl out and she becomes Umi, essentially. So yeah, uh, I think she's really important. And I'm going to talk about some like plays and combos that you can make later. Uh, where uh, she can be very useful. Next, we're going to play one copy of Skull Mariner. Alright, so Skull Mariner is a normal monster. Water, level 4, warrior. So why are we playing this card? So this deck has a lot of interactions with normal monsters. Um, I, I already covered one of them. So when Mega Fortress well, is destroyed and goes to the graveyard, right? you can special a... Uh, one water warrior monster from your deck or graveyard. Now, the water warrior monster you, you summon is not required to be normal. It can be an effect monster. But because we don't want to run too many bricks in our deck, we're using Skull Mariner because it, it fulfills several niches. One, it's a water warrior. It can be sp special summoned off whale. Two, it's level four. Same same level as, as Jellyfish. It will always be the same level. So it's it's a free XC summon. Um, another reason, three. or I don't know if I, if I said two, but... Uh, because it's a warrior, and it's the only warrior in your, in your entire deck, uh, we, we, we're going to be running a, a floodgate called uh, There Can Be Only One, and this this card will never conflict with any other card, right? Um, Kyrushin is a sea serpent, uh, Jellyfish is an aqua, Fortress Well is a fish, this is a warrior. So you can literally have five monsters on your field under TC Boo, and none of it's going to conflict. Four, uh, this, there is a, we're going to get into some cards later that specifically reference uh, normal water monsters, and this is normal water monster. So, so it, so basically, th this fills all those niches, right? Um, anyway, uh, all right. So those are honestly all the monsters in our deck. Next, let's get into spells that I believe to be core. Um, so let's start with the most obvious one, Legendary Ocean. So this card is you is uh, Umi on the field. All water monsters gain 200 attack defense, and the levels of all water monsters in both players' hands in the field reduced by one. That means uh, your Kyrushin becomes level 4, you can normal summon it. All your level 4s become level 3, so you can do rank 3 plays. Your Fortress Royal goes from level 7 to level 6, so it only requires one tribute instead of two tributes. And guess what? This also affects your opponent's monsters. So if, if they're playing Sprite and they're playing the the toad pack, the frog package, all the frogs are, are, are level 2 waters, they'll become level 1, and then they'll be useless for Sprites, right? Also, you're against a Sword Soul. Uh, Moye is a water, and all the Sword Soul tokens are waters, which means uh, Moye cannot make a Synchro 8, can only make a syn Synchro 6. Uh, Long End cannot make a Synchro 10, can only make a Synchro 9. Uh, Taya can, can only make a Synchro 7, cannot make a Synchro 8, so... This is this can really fuck up um, sword soul um, players as like a pseudo flugget that you're not that you're not even like ref, um, relying on right. It's just a, a cool little effect that hurts them, um, and that you can also utilize the fact that this is Umi on the field. So anyway, uh, next uh, we're we'll be playing C Stealth uh, C Stealth two. So C Stealth two. Is essentially three more copies of Umi. So this card's name becomes Umi while on the field. It's a continuous spell, right? So we essentially have eight copies of Umi. Uh, nine if you count the monster, right? Um, yeah, so uh, this effect says your opponent cannot target water monster you control with non-water monster effects. So they can't use Chi Shao. They can't use Effect Filler. They can't use Barone to pop your m monsters, right? They can't do... There are a lot of stuff they can't do. They can't even use Entis in the graveyard to pop one of your monsters, right? So while this is on the field, your monsters are protected from being targeted by card effects, right? Um, next effect, which is very important. At the start of battle phase, you can special summon from your hand or graveyard one monster that mentions Umi or one water normal monster in defense position. So, again, Skull Mariner fulfills the niche here, but destroyed at the end of the battle phase. So, this is really good because that means, like, as long as you have this on the field, it's, your, your board will never be, you know, in the battle phase. You'll always be safe. But also, if you use this to revive, like, your Fortress Whale... Guess what, folks? Fortress Run in, in the graveyard can literally, like, pop your opponent's monsters, right? Or let's say you don't have Legendary Ocean, but you have Kyrushin. 
on in your hand and you have this right let's say you're going second and they have a full board activate this enter battle phase as soon as battle phase starts you see still summon kairishin clears kairishin will clear the board and then kairishin goes away in the end of battle phase but you clear their board that's the point right so yeah this card is very good very very good mandatory three of in my opinion all right next we're gonna run fish sonar three copies of fish sonar so let's read what this card does this is another this is another starter Normal spell. Add one level 7 or lower monster from your deck to your hand. So all your monsters are level 7 or lower. And, but it has to be a monster that mentions Umi or is a water normal monster. Then, if Umi is on the field, you can special summon one water normal monster from your deck. You can only activate one fish on our per turn. So this card is good because it can search any of your monsters. Period. All your monsters are searchable off this. But the cool part is this is essential. This is another way to get your Kyrie Let's say you do not have Legendary Ocean. Let's say you have Sea Stealth 2 and you have this in your hand. For the sake of example. You activate Sea Cell 2, Ubi's down on your field, you play Fish Sonar, Kairoshin searches to your hand, and then you get to special summon one water normal monster in your deck. Guess what? Skull Mariner, remember this? Remember the Skull Mariner? Skull Mariner fulfills that requirement. So you can special summon Skull Mariner from your deck onto the field, and then you can immediately tribute summon Skull Mariner for your Kairoshin, because Kairoshin requires one tribute when it's level 5. So, yeah, th this card is really good. Uh, most of the time, you'll be searching Kairoshin or Jellyfish. Um, if you already have Kyrushin and Jellyfish, search Doom Crocken. You want Doom Crocken in your hand, it's really good. Um, but yeah, also, this like, yeah, it's, it's like, it's a, it's a search and a special summon. Like, how could you, how could you go wrong with that, right? It's just a good card. Obviously, they can Ash you, but you know, whatever. They Ash, they have Ash, they have Ash. But yeah, so, Skull, again, Skull Mariner is fulfilling all these niches, right? Some people like to split the niches. Some people like to, like, oh, I'm gonna run, uh, Gaga Gigo, the, the level 6 or 7 water, or, uh, I'm gonna run, uh, um, you know, the, the Ice Jade, this, uh, the the Ancient Warriors or whatever, the Ice Barrier, that, right? They try to, like, split all these requirements, but, the di folks, this, this deck has a very, very big core. It's tight. We're tight on space. We can't be splitting, um, like, all these wa Water Warrior monster, normal Water monster, like, all this, this stuff against cards. Skull Mariner fulfills all your niches. It's literally everything you could possibly want out of a... A brick and it's not even a brick because this is a level four so you can literally normal summon this and it'll be a 1600 body which can run over sprite elf right so yeah it can run over ip mascarena it can run over a lot of things so yeah don't underestimate this card is, is really good so fish sonar three of them uh so yeah this does say uh you can only activate one fish sonar per turn but again and normally i would say oh, oh if oh, if you know i don't like to in my other deck profiles, I say, oh, if it's if a card is once per turn, don't run, don't run more than two. But again, that was in like a back row deck where it doesn't really matter, like if you see a card or not. It matters more of like if every card in your hand is useful and does something. This deck really requires you to have like two cards, right? Combinations of two cards, right? It's it's so it's slightly comboy, but it's more like a mid range controller deck. But anyway, so it's really important that you see these cards as often as possible. So, Kairoshin, we basically have three copies that you can hard drive, and we have three copies of Fish Sonar that can search it. So, you have six copies. Hopefully, you'll be seeing uh, Kairoshin, right? More core cards. We're not done with core cards. Again, like I said before, this is a huge core. So, uh, three copies of Sea Stealth Attack. So, this card is cracked. Um, this is... Your pr the primary thing that you're going to search with Kairoshin if you don't have it, right? So let's read what this card says. Continuous Trap card. When this card is activated, that means when you flip it from face down to face up, you can activate an Umi from your hand or graveyard. Cool. So if you have an Umi in graveyard and you don't have one on the field, you can put it on the field. Then, so that's the first thing that happens when you flip it face up. Next, after it's already been face up, while it has these effects. While Umi is on the field, this face up card gains these effects. First effect, once per turn, you can banish one water monster you control until the end phase. That's cost. This turn, face up spell traps you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Even this card loses food. That means Lightning Storm can't kill you. Can't kill your back row. Uh, Harpies can't kill your back row. Uh, Runic Destruction can't kill your back row. Twin Twisters can't kill your back row. This card protects all your face up uh, back row. And guess what? Most of your back row is going to be face up. Why? Uh, field Spell, going to be face up. Sea Cell 2, going to be face up. Um... This card's going to be face up. So most of your back row will be face up cards. Um, so as you can imagine, this, we don't actually play Lord of the Heavenly Prison in this deck because Lord of the Heavenly Prison only protects face down cards. So if most of your back row is going to be face up, what's the point of Lord of the Heavenly Prison? And um, this card is already protecting your back row. So 
Yeah, there's been almost no, very few duels, almost no duels where I got blown out by back row destruction. It's very difficult because you try to turbo this card out as quickly as possible. Why do we run three? Because it's it says once per turn. It's once per turn per card, right? So you can actually uh, have two or three of these face up on the field, and all of them will be activatable uh, on your opponents. You, yeah, you can literally banish. Like, oh, why would you want to banish? Uh, well, sometimes you got to dodge effects. Like, you have, there are effects that target your monsters. Maybe you use this to dodge it, right? So this is not once per turn. Just keep that in mind. It's once per turn per card. Cool. Next, uh, Kyrushin Dark Reef. Oh, sorry. We play uh, two of these, not three of these. So Dark Reef is a, a once per turn. Um, and it's a little less important than the other cards. So this is like your secondary or tertiary search target uh, if uh, for, off Kyrushin. So if, if you already have Sea Stealth, if you already have an Umi, or what, blah, 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 you already have, then you search this one, right? And and uh, so this, let's read this card. This says, send one face-up Umi. You control the Graybeard. As cost, special summon up to two monsters with different names from your hand and or deck that mention Umi or a water or monster in, in defense position. Then, if your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon any number of level six or lower water normal monsters from your hand and or deck. Guess what, folks? Uh, that Skull Mariner fulfills that niche. Until the end of your next turn after this card resolves, you cannot special summon monsters except water monsters. So this card does lock you into only summoning water monsters until the, uh, for, for the next turn. But this is the only card in your deck that locks you. So, yeah. This card's really good. Um, so, let's talk about... Uh, so... I, this is the main core, I would say. Like, I would say don't play fewer than any of these, right? And then optional tech or optional core, like cards, like two cards that are, are core-ish but are, like, theoretically cuttable are I'm running one copy of Foolish Burial Goods and one copy of um, Ice Barrier. So what is this, what is this about? So... Foolish Barrel Goods can send any spell trap from deck to graveyard, okay? Why would you want to do that? So, uh, two reasons. First, remember how I said Sea Stealth Attack can uh, put, get grab an Umi from your graveyard and put it on the field? So, if you don't open an Umi, you can literally, like, Foolish Barrel an Umi, like a Legendary Ocean or Sea Stealth. So, Sea Stealth 2 is Umi in the graveyard as well. And then, uh, if you set this, you flip it, you, you now have an Umi on the field, right? So, that's, so that's pretty good. Not next, what is this Ice Barrier? Let's read what this card says. Normal Trap. When an attack is declared, evolving your opponent's monster. Change that opponent's monster's attack to zero. Negate its effects. Also cannot change his battle position. You can banish this card from your graveyard. Send one level five or higher water monster from your deck to your graveyard. Then you can add one water monster to your graveyard in your hand. Also, until the end of your next turn after this effect resolves, you cannot spread some monsters except water monsters. Sorry, I lied before. You can, uh, you lo this also locks you into, into water monsters. So this and the two Dark Reefs can do that. So what's, what's this card about? So this card kind of fulfills two niche. One, uh, if you ha are having trouble getting over an opponent's monster, uh, you can literally like make its attack zero and, and negate. So like, let's say you're against a sprite player and they put they they make Avermax with uh, IP Mascarena, right? Um, so which means Avermax is indestructible by card effects. It, you know, it, it can't be targeted. And also because this is the fact every time it, it, it engages in battle with a special summon monster, it gains like 3000 attack or whatever, or whatever attack. So this is one out to, to a big tower type monster where, oh, if Ava Max attack one of your monsters, you flip this, it's, its attack becomes zero, it gets negated, and it just dies. It just kills itself, right? So sometimes that comes up, doesn't come up often, or they go into battle phase, they want to run over your Kyroshin with something, or run over um, your uh, Jellyfish. You can use this to, and they'll suicide, right? Uh, Speaking of running over Kyrushin, one uh, I forgot to sorry uh, for sea salt attack. There's one more important important effect I forgot to read. The second bullet point: at the start of the damage step, if your water monster whose original level is five or higher battles an opponent's monster, destroy that opponent's monster. So that means any mon if this is on the field, any monster that battles either your Kyrushin or your whale gets destroyed. Mandatory effect, not once per turn. So yeah, li you li they literally cannot run over it. Period. They just die immediately. Now, obviously, if, if they have destruction protection like Avermax with after IP Mascarena, it'll it'll get protected. If they have branded opening in the graveyard and they attack with the fusion, you know, branded open can, can protect it from being destroyed, right? So it's not like foolproof, but for the most part, they're not running over your Kyrushin. It ain't, it ain't happening. Uh, the other effect of Ice Spirit, which is more important, is uh, you can banish this card from your graveyard, 
Send a level 5 or higher water monster in the deck to your graveyard, then add a water monster from your graveyard to your hand. So, that means this is a searcher, right? And in fact, uh, but it has to be in the graveyard. So, how do we get in the graveyard? Foolish Burial Goods. So, some players will run two of these. Foolish Burial Goods, some players will run three of these. Foolish Burial Goods. Uh, again, the deck is very tight, and I, I could not find a space for a second. But I would say, run no more than two Foolish Burial Goods. And honestly, some people run two Ice Bearers. Uh, I think that's a mistake, because this card is a brick. That you'd never want to see in your hand most of the time. Almost never want to see in your hand. It's like a uh, vision hero increase, right? Um, you want it to be in your deck. You don't want to see it in your hand. Um, so the crack ratio of hero increase is one, because by putting making it two, you're you're seeing the brick in your in your in your hand more often. So you don't want that. So yeah, this is at one. Even if you bump up foolish barrel goods to two, foolish barrel goods is also once per turn. So um, yeah, you can't even. Uh, yeah, so that's why I would say no more than two. But honestly, one is fine. Uh, so in the theoretically, we have seven copies of Kyrushin. Three hard draw, uh, three from Fish Stonar, and then uh, eight, uh, seven is uh, Foolish Burial into Ice, Ice Barrier, and Ice Barrier searches it. Ice Barrier can also search Gamma Seal because it says add a water monster to your to your hand from the graveyard. But we do not play Gamma Seal. Some Umi control decks will, will tell you to play the one copy of the Gamma Seal Kaiju, but I don't think it's worth it, honestly. Like, it, it, I feel like it doesn't do enough. Tributing one monster, eh, it just, just doesn't do enough, in my opinion. So I don't I don't bother with Gamma Seal. So yeah, so this is the, the core, folks. Uh, we're at 28 cards, and we just finished the main core of the deck and the archetype. So yeah, it, there's not a lot of uh, deck space. Like, And again, some people run two Foolish or three Foolish. Some people run two Ice Bears. Some people, yeah, so honestly, yeah, don't mess with it. Some people run three... Warrior of Atlantis, but I think that's overkill, and again, the deck is tight. I don't think it's worth it. Now, let's get into cards that are not core, that are all relatively optional. Um, so we do run one copy of Pro Prod of Prosperity, one copy of Prod of Extravagance. So if this were the TCG, I'd be telling I'd be telling ev all of you, you sh we should run three copies of Prosperity, because Prosperity is so good in this deck, because again, you sometimes you need that one card to really get you out of a pickle, right? Um, and duality, or like to help you establish your board, and duality, uh, uh, sorry, prosperity helps with that, um, so it can like really unbreak your hand. So, so why not one prosperity, two extravagance? Uh, again, deck feels tight. I mean, maybe if you want, you can cut uh, foolish barrel goods and ice barrier for uh, another copy of extravagant. Maybe if you want, you can do a third copy of of warrior of Atlantis. What, whatever. But the point is, I felt like one of each pot was good because again, these can be bricky if you see too many pots, right? Unfortunately, we cannot run three prosperity. Otherwise, we'd probably be running three prosperities. Um, next, uh, optional texts that I feel are not that super optional. So we're running two copies of Goes a Match. Two copies of There Can Be Only One. Uh, yeah, uh, both these floodgates are mega amazing in the current format. I was like, oh, why would you need Goes a Match if you already have Kyrushin? Isn't Kyrushin your floodgate? What if you don't see Kyrushin? Then you have a backup floodgate, right? Um, and plus, it's it's easier to stop Kyrushin from coming out to the field, like if you're like my your opponent, than it is to stop goes and match. So, yeah, goes and match. Rex, uh, Math Mech, Rex Sprite, Rex Sword Soul, Rex most decks that you're gonna see in the format. Um, even Exo Sister, right? Uh, Exo Sister starter monster all Earth. Their XCs are all uh, lights, right? Um, there can be only one. Rex Sprite, most of their monsters are thunders, right? Uh, Rex Sword Soul, they're all uh, worms. Rex. Uh, math mech, but really any code talker cyber deck, right? Because there's only one monster, right? Meanwhile, in our deck we have, uh, you know, a warrior, we have aqua, we have a sea serpent, we have fish. We can absolutely play around TC Boo and like not even notice that it exists. Rivalry hurts our deck, goes in, and TC Boo does not. Um, if they rivalry us, it kind of sucks, but like, yeah, uh, these cards are really good in the current format. Definitely play them. Um, they've saved my ass so many times. And then we have six card, card slots left, so what do we do? We're going to run three copies of Dark Ruler No More, three copies of Evenly Matched. So, wait a minute, aren't we a control deck? Why do we need this? Because, again, we it's not like a regular trap deck where any any five, six cards in our ha opening hand can probably break our opponent's board. We need to see specific cards, right? If like As soon as we get Kairushin on the field, their board is broken. But to get there, especially if we're going second... Sometimes we need to do a little board breaking first. Like, maybe we need to negate their whole board via Dark Ruler. Dark Ruler is a godsend against Sprite. They're going to set up a million negates and interruptions. You just say Dark Ruler no more. You say no. And then you summon Kairushin and their board is gone, right? Evenly matched. This card absolutely wrecks uh, Brandadespia. Brandadespia. 
uh, Sword Soul. It, if they have Barone, it baits the negate. If they don't, it, it, it destroys their board, right? Sprite, this baits uh, uh, Carrot. If they have it, if they don't have Carrot, they get screwed, right? What about Pure Runic? If they have a bunch of uh, Runic, they're just Pure Runic. They have the field symbol. They have a bunch of set. This is your out. You just evenly match them. And, like, what are they going to do? Cry. That's what they're going to do. So, yeah. Uh, basically, going... S so, this car this deck, obviously, much better going first and going second. But, um, going second, if you open Dark Ruler evenly, you can break any board. with One Dark Ruler, one evenly. You can break literally any board. There's nothing... I, I doubt they can do much about it unless they're, like, a back row deck that have judgments, right? Um, so, yeah. Again, Sprite, if you open Dark Ruler evenly, you're... They're done. If you open just Dark Ruler, they're probably done. If you open just evenly, they might be done, depending on what monsters they have. Um, other board breakers, by the way, evenly really good against Math Mech, because uh, it forces them to use uh, Super Laplacian early. Um, and if they don't, then like they just lose everything except that, that one interruption. So, Because, you know, the, after they Super Laplacian, or Super Factorial, whatever, uh, into Laplacian, they, uh, they have a, an additional negate, right? Um, that they would probably want to use against Evenly Match. Evenly Match also good against Flu. Um, yeah, so these two cards can clear boards going second. Another two cards that can clear boards going second is Ocean and Kyrushin. Literally, like, main phase, activate Ocean, normal summon Kyrushin. Their board is broken. They have to clear their board except all for but one monster. So, yeah, <laughs> it's really funny. So if they don't stop your Ocean, so if they're smart, if they have more than one brain cell, they, maybe uh, they'll, they'll shotgun uh, Super Factorial. If they're a math mech, and then get rid of Ocean, maybe they'll use Carrot to negate, uh, send a, a link to, uh, rank two to negate the activate uh, Ocean and get off the field. But um, don't forget, folks, we have five copies of Ocean. So we have two of these, three of these, right? And then, uh, dual, uh, sorry, Prosperity and Extraft can also uh, draw into them, right? Um, and then Kyrushin, obviously, I already said we had like seven copies of it. So... It's not bad going second. You can definitely go second with this deck. Obviously, it's just not going to be as good as Labyrinth or like, you know, you know you're not going to prefer to go second. But um, no, we do not have Pot of Duality because we do require special summoning in this deck um, a lot. So yeah, we're not running Duality. So just one Prosperity, one Extrav. If you really want to cut the Foolish uh, Barrel Goods package, you can put a second Extrav and maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a third Extrav. It's up to you, but... Um, yeah, this is a this. Yeah, I think these ratios are very solid. Um, this got me to diamond one. Obviously, it took me longer than labyrinth than labyrinth would have, but you know, alas, it's it's still a good deck. All right, extra deck. Here, here we have an extra deck that does matter, even though we have extra have prosperity. We do actually go into our extra deck quite often. So let's start with some because uh, we have a lot of level fours, and when uh, the ocean legendary ocean on the field, they become level threes. So we're gonna be, be making rank four plays and rank three plays. So let's get into some. Uh, good rank fours. So let's start with Baguska. This card is great. Uh, if you don't see Kyrushin, if you just have Jellyfish and like, you know, maybe Maiden, maybe uh, Warrior, you can just normal Jellyfish, special the other level four, make Baguska. And then sit on your ass uh, for two, three turns until you see uh, Kyrushin, right? We're running uh, one copy of Abyss Dweller. Uh, that's just a, a, a graveyard floodgate, like against Drytron, right? Uh, especially like on subsequent turns, like. They need their graveyard to, to do stuff, right? Um, and if they don't, then you get screwed. Um, we also have uh, one copy of uh, Stealth Kragen with two copies of the um, Kragen spawn. Whoops. Oh, sorry. So one copy of Stealth Kragen, two copies of the Stealth Kragen spawn. So let's read what this card does. Two level four water monsters. All face of monsters on the field become water. That's hilarious because if you also have Gozen Match, that means as soon as their first monster is the field, they have a water. Any monster th after that that's in their hand or extra deck that are not water cannot even attempt to summon because they're locked in the waters, right? Then it says once per turn during the main phase, quick effect, can destroy one water monster your opponent controls, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half the attack it had on the field. So you can literally just like pop your opponent's monsters and burn them, right? Uh, if this exceeds summon card is uh, destroyed, you can spell summon Stealth Kraken spawns from your extra deck up to the number of materials this card had, then attach up to one water monster from each. So basically, this is going to have two materials. When it's destroyed, you can summon two uh, Kraken spawns. That's why you have these. Kraken spawns. Once per turn in the main phase, you can destroy one water monster your opponent controls. Simple enough. If this card is special summoned by the effect of a number of XYZ monsters destroyed, special summon 
other stealth kraken monster from your graveyard up to the number of materials this card had then you can attach up to one water monster from your graveyard to each so basically these are just like bodies that like just keep coming back from like keep summoning themselves back and so it's it's like obnoxious but also like if you watch my adventure this series this card like by itself can like win you games it's really good so yeah really good um one thing I wanted to mention is that, uh, unfortunately, and actually fortunately, uh, Totally Awesome is banned. But if it wasn't, we'd be playing Totally Awesome, totally awesome with uh, the Bahamut Shark. So yeah, that, that was something I used to run in, in Umi Control before the ban. So, yeah, th which was really powerful. Alright, more rank 4s. Uh, gotta have the Zodiac package, right? One copy of Zodiac Chak and I. One copy of Zodiac Borbo and one copy of Divine Arsenal A A A Zeus Sky Thunder. So if you have two level fours and you're going second, uh, any two level four monsters, right? You make this, you rank up into uh, Zodiac Borbo, and then you attack them directly because that's Borbo's effect. And then you can go into a four material Zeus, clear their board, and then you'll have two materials for the following turn, and then you can clear the board again once they start making stuff. So. Yeah, here, there's your uh, rank 4 Zeus package. Alright, what about rank 3s? Let's talk rank 3s. So, there aren't that many rank 3s, but they can come up. So, we are running one copy of Super Quantum Mech, Mech Beast Grand Pulse. This is a water monster. 2 level 3 monster. Cannot attack unless it has material. Once per turn, detach next season from this card. Target spell trap on the field. Destroy it. This has 2800 defense. It becomes 3000 under um, Legendary Ocean. So, yeah, you can um, just... Especially against Labyrinth matchups or back row decks, you can just pop their cards, right? We're also running um, one copy of number 49 Fortune Tune. What is this about? So this is a, a rank 3, two level 3 monsters. So under Ocean, right? Your monsters are level 3. Neither player can target this card in the field with card effects. So if this card would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach one material from this card instead. So basically, the idea is... Uh, this card is uh, another way to make Zeus, right? Because if your opponent's monsters are in defense position, you attack, you know, you take some damage, but then you've attacked, so now you can uh, make Zeus. And if you're in attack position, you can attack, and then this card is protected from being destroyed, right, by its effect. So then when you make that, you can then also go into Downer Magician. So we are running one copy of Downer Magician. So rank three play, going second, Fortune Tune, attack, Downer Magician, Zeus. And you have a four material Zeus, so yeah. So those are pretty much all our Xyz monsters. Um, we are running one copy of uh, the Water Charmer. So one copy of Area of the Water Charmer. This never came up, but theoretically you can grab your opponent's Robina. You can grab your opponent's uh, uh, Marine Cess monsters. Honestly, I didn't see any Marine Cess. Literally zero Marine Cesses on my climb, which is part of the reason I wanted to play Umi Control. I noticed that like. After the the new the the sprite came out on the new ban list, Marine Cess was like dropped off the face of the earth. And obviously this this deck does very little to uh, Marine Cess because Kairushin cannot like stop them from doing anything. But yeah, but if it comes up, you know you, you can uh, revive one of their water monsters. Doesn't come up often. Most of the time, if you're using Prosperity, you're just gonna banish area. But whatever, it, it's there. Speaking of Marine Cess, uh, we are running one copy of Marine Cess Coral Anemone. So any two water monsters can make this. This is in Link 2. It says, target one water monster, 1,500 attack or less in your graveyard, special summon it to your zone, this card points to. And then you're locked into water monsters. But, uh, yeah, all your monsters, like Kraken, um, Maiden, right, uh, Jellyfish, they're all uh, 1,500 attack or less. So technically you can revive you can revive them, right, and then use them for other things. We are running one copy of Abyss Keeper. Uh, this card is okay. I never really made it, but let's read what it says. Two water monsters cannot be used as link materials. If this card is linked, you can special summon a fish monster from your hand to the zone this card points to. The only fish monster in your deck is your uh, whale, so this can help you get it out of the hand if it, if it kind of breaks there. Uh, you can target one other fish monster you control and one card your opponent controls. Banish those cards. So, you, so uh, yeah, you can. this is a targeting banish, so if you want to get rid of annoying uh, monsters, let's say like an indestructible Appalooza or indestructible whatever from IP Masquerina, you can just uh, banish your whale and the, and uh, their card. So, again, this never really came up. And of course, and we're also running one copy of Axis Code Talker. This also never came up, but sometimes uh, you can definitely generate bodies with this deck. Um, so yeah, it's there in case you need to break their board. Obviously, you have a link too, so this will be 4300 attack at most. Uh, by the way, folks, just just one thing I want to mention. So remember, Sea Stealth Attack or Sea Stealth Two says 
During ba start, ba it, start a battle phase, you can you can special summon a, a monster, water monster from uh, hand or graveyard, but it's it, it's destroyed at the end of the battle phase, right? So what you do is the combo is you use Sea Stealth two to put a get a monster from graveyard or hand, and then before you end your battle phase, you use Sea Stealth attack to banish that water monster until your end phase for cost, right? And then uh, that monster will not pop on the end phase and, and on the battle phase, and it will return on end phase. So you essentially permanently revive that monster. So for those of you wondering about oh, all these um, these uh, Xyz monsters and like Link monsters, whatever you Xyz or Link away, like like Link send monster to the graveyard, you can literally revive them with Sea Stealth two, and then keep them per permanently with Sea Stealth attacks, right? So don't 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 worry about like using bodies, right? Especially with Xyz monsters where like uh, you detach, you usually detach for costs, usually, right? Uh, you can literally revive the monster. You just detach for costs. Speaking of. Your Kyrushins are level 5, but they become level 4s when, when you have a, a Legendary Ocean. So, technically, you can use your... Under the Ocean, you can use Kyrushin to do rank 4 plays, if you really want to. D detach the Kyrushin, and then revive it immediately with Sea Stealth plus Sea Stealth Attack. So, yeah, very good. So, yeah, this deck is very solid. Um, I never had any issues with back row blowout. It just doesn't come up. You don't need lore. You don't need judgments. Uh, again, it's a very tight deck, right? We, we literally had to go to 28 cards before we started talking about, like, quote-unquote optional... Uh, tech slots, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's 28 card core. It's insane. Um, yeah, Skull Mariner is is the is the one normal monster you gotta run. Like, don't listen to those other videos that like, oh, they do Ice Jade Tremora or uh, um, you know, w w Gaga Gigo or whatever that that uh, um, uh, Ice Ice Warriors or you know what what Ice Barrier monster is like whatever. You don't need any of that. This is all you need is Skull Mariner. So anyway. Uh, yeah, that's the deck. Um, let me think of any other combos I may have forgotten. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kyrushin's Dark Reef. Very important. So, you know how I said... You know how this card requires you to send Umi, you control the graveyard for cost, right? So, if you have Sea Stealth Attack and uh, Dark Reef and Umi on the field, you can literally, like, on your opponent's draw phase, Chain Link 1, Ky uh, Reef, send Umi away. Chain Link 2, Sea Stealth Attack to put Umi back. And then, you know, when you resolve the chain, you'll get two, you'll get two or three bodies from your deck. Onto the field. And, yeah. So, it's pretty good. Um, sometimes, what if you don't have that luxury of having the Dark Reef plus the Sea Stealth attack, right? So, let's say uh, you only have Dark Reef and an Umi, right, on the field. What do you do, right? Because most of your monsters require Umi on the field to use their effects. So, what you do is, let's say you have Ocean and this. You flip this. You send Ocean or, or Sea Stealth 2 or whatever. And make sure one of the monsters you summon from the deck is Maiden of the Aqua, right? You're going to get two or three summons. Summon Maiden, summon Kyrushin, summon your, your Skull Mariner. Or summon Maiden and Kyrushin. Or summon Maiden and one other card. So Maiden will become your Umi. So obviously she can get negated by Imperm, but, you know, that almost never comes up. But yeah, so Maiden is a... The reason we play Maiden is because she's a great way to make sure that uh, if you need to use Dark Reef and you have to get rid of your Umi for cost, you can still get an Umi on the field thanks to her, so... Yeah, she's great, and she's 2,000 defense, uh, so she'll be hard to run over, um, and then you could always, like, uh, banish her away if, if she's being threatened. Like, if you do have Sea Stealth attack, like, send her away, right? So, yeah, uh, let me think about any other cool tricks that you should know about this deck. I think that's everything. Um, yeah, obviously, you can dodge t anything that targets thanks to Sea Stealth uh, attack, um, and you can also dodge things that target thanks to Doom Crockin, so, yeah. Very versatile deck. Um, a lot of times your win condition is uh, Dark Reef into the Fortress Whale and then attack uh, attack directly for game, right? That, that's a very big uh, win condition. Is being able to just ignore your opponent's monsters and attack them directly. So, anyway. Alright. Thank you all for watching. Um, I'm probably not going to make any Umi Control content for a while. And if I do, it'll probably be TCG, not Master Duel. But, by the way, Umi Control, not uh, not crazy to play in TCG right now. Now that uh, TC Boo and Gozen Match are both good, Right? Uh, then yeah, Umi Control I can definitely see as a viable rogue option in the, in the current TCG. So anyway, uh, yeah, uh, once Tier comes out, this deck is gonna fall hard out of relevancy. But you know, we'll see. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. And see you in the next video. Peace.